Hi, I'm Harold Wilderson, and I want to welcome you to This Is My Story. Love and blessings he'll provide all around the world. When you hear my story, give God the glory. Hi, my name is Danny Keene, and this is my story. Hi, Dan. I'm so glad you could be here with us today. Thank you, Harold. Um, wow. You've come a long way. Oh, yes. And you've been my friend for a number of years, and I just appreciate you so much as a dear brother. Well, thank you. And uh, I was just wondering, uh, where did this all start? How did this all start, your life? Did well, you I'm 59 years old, born in Somerset, Kentucky, in the south central part of Kentucky, in the Somerset City Hospital along with my twin brother, Davey, who was a pastor in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, that's about where it all started. And, and uh, yes, I've come a long ways in 59 years, 58 years. Well, uh, during that time, uh, I mean, you're a pastor now, and I know there are a lot of people coming to Christ through your life and your testimony. Uh, how long did it take you to get to where you are now in Jesus Christ? Well, by the, in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, and verse 11, the Bible says, by the word of my testimony and the blood of the Lamb, uh, I didn't get to that verse until I was 34 years old. Oh, my. And <laughs> I had a lot of living to do uh, through all that. I, I went to high school uh, there in Russell County, Kentucky, uh, and I was there uh, 12 whole years and, and uh, decided I'd quit in the 10th grade. And you can do the math on that if you want to. And... <laughs> I've done a couple of years twice, I think. That's why I had 12 years to get into 10. But I quit that and went into the service. And uh, being locked down on the farm for all those years and, and for 17 years and tied to Mama's apron and things like that, when I did get out into the world, I went wild. Okay. And uh, Well, all of us have broken one of the Ten Commandments, at least probably, at least one in our lives. Uh, Danny, how... How many, have you ever broken any of the commandments? Almost as many as Moses. Not, <laughs> not quite as many. But yes, I, I've broken quite a few of them. <laughs> um, have you ever had any close calls, any near-death experiences? Several during, times. Several times? Several tell times us, through, through drinking us. and alcohol, drugs. Um, growing up after I got out of the Navy, I, I drank a lot of times in the Navy. Uh, had a lot of close calls uh, um, in car wrecks and things like that, being drunk. And uh, I remember one night I, I drank some Jack Daniels whiskey and and some uh, some vodka. And, and of course, I was dating the high sheriff's wife at that time, and he was six foot seven, weighed three hundred forty-two pounds, and I was just a little runt. And uh, but Jack Daniels and Hiram Walker was pretty tall that night. <laughs> but I remember in that fight that I, I pretty much lost it. He almost killed me. Uh, that's why my left eye is kind of drooping, and I'm not very photogenic uh, because uh, he beat me so bad that they that I had died on the operating table over 11 minutes. And uh, of course there was a lawsuit and all that stuff. But anyways. Out of all of that, uh, I think that had a big part in bringing me around to, to trying to live my life the right way. And and uh, I didn't come to Christ for, for a couple of years later till I was 34 years old. And I did that down in the woods on the farm that we had farmed. And uh, I never will forget that I was uh, laying over an old pine log that uh, where the loggers had logged the, the woods at one time. and. And I, I, I still preach this, that I was gave my heart and life to Jesus Christ right there, just me and him alone by ourselves, leaned over that log. And I will never will forget that that pine log was a uh, log that the builders rejected. Mm -hmm. And I've always remembered the cornerstone that the builders rejected was Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it so, uh, so, uh, so that complemented my testimony there. Uh, and all that, but I, I I don't remember many times getting home. Uh, don't remember how I got home. I've I was sharecrop when I was younger. I 
one of my best crop was marijuana. We, <laughs> Kentucky, you know, drew, drew marijuana quite frequently, and we'd ship it to Indiana and and make good money on that. And and then of course I got into cooking crack cocaine and things like that. And uh, I got it, got into some hard stuff. And and uh, uh, till I was 34 years old, but I remember driving a tractor trailer. And my brother, my twin brother in Indianapolis, I'd go by and see him every now and then. And he would go out and he would put his hand on the side of my tractor um, and uh, say, Danny, if you was the only one ever died, ever lived on the face of the earth, Jesus Christ would have still come and he would have died for you and you alone. And I didn't realize till years later that he had put oil on his hands and he had anointed, anointed my truck. Your, tr your truck track. I would cry for miles. Oh, my <laughs> <laughs> Tears of spread, and, and I would, I would, I would get drunk, and uh, not in the truck, but I, I used to go down on Fishing Creek and get drunk and listen to Southern gospel music, and just bawl my eyes out. And God was God out of all the drinking and the drugs and the women and all the things and overseas, and I, I was in the Navy and every port I had women in every port and things like that. But out of all of this, God was using this to prepare me. Mm -hmm. To reach people that was living that were living like that today, and um, the saddest part of my entire life, my entire Christian, my sinning life, is this: that I, I went come out of the Navy on the GI Bill, and went to uh, a college there in Kentucky. It was a Bible college that took 16 credit hours in a Bible college, lived like a heathen, heathen, growed marijuana, did drugs, uh, ran after women. This is all while you're all in Bible college. All while I was in Bible college, and I don't remember not one time all those sons of the preachers and all those different denominations, nobody telling me about Christ is that in right? an entire year. In a Bible college. In a Bible college. And I just realized that a few years, a couple years ago, that I, I had went to that college and was never witnessed to. And I, I, I always wondered, would I have come around faster or that was God making me go through all this stuff and letting me go through this so that I could I could bring it home to the people that really needed it, you know, because I have that testimony. But when I was in the service, I didn't have very many, there's not very many Christian mentors in the service. Uh, they like for you to go out to the bar and, and they know all the good places to go and all these things. And uh, I remember when I was out of town a lot of times, I'd I went, and working out of town, I'd always get the yellow pages as soon as I'd get in the motel room. I'd, I'd hunt me a bar, you know, mm -hmm. and a place where I could go and do some drinking. And and ever since I got saved, I, I, that, that was my last drop to drink. Um, I was, Never drunk I, since? No, I, I go in the motel room now out of town and I open up the, yellow, the pages and I try to find me a church. And, and wherever I'm at on Sunday night or Wednesday night, if I'm out of town, I, I'm hunting a church somewhere. Uh, to fellowship with uh, my brothers and sisters. That's, I've had more fun. I, I, can, I can't remember a good time I had in the bar, mm -hmm. but I can I can cut a rug on the dance floor of the church sanctuary <laughs> and have a good old time in this Pentecostal way. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> did you, why did you wait until you were 34 years old to give your heart to Christ? Well, I, I tell you what, I, I never was around anyone that I, I saw that was real. Uh, that I didn't. That uh, when I got when I got saved, I began to get began to gather folks around me that that would would be good mentors uh, to me in a Christian way, you know. And not because of what I thought they should be, but because of what the Bible said they should be. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 there's so much legalism and judgmental, uh, you know. And and, and um, I I believe for years that I, there, no, I could never get saved. I would never be as good as them, and I didn't have to be as good as mm -hmm. them. I had to be as good as I was to be saved. So how good do you have to be before Christ will save you? I mean, how did you felt like you weren't good enough at one time? Well, I felt that I wasn't worthy. You know, I mean, I, I didn't feel welcome in church. I mean, uh -huh. in other words, I, I wouldn't. Everybody knew who I was and what I was, and and, and uh, I knew what I was, you. and yeah. and then um, I, I've seen people. Uh, in different since I got saved, I've seen people, uh, big men, jump over the back pew and run to the altar and, and give their life and heart to Jesus Christ. But no, you don't have to do it in a church. Uh, my God is omnipresent. He's uh, 
everywhere all the time. He's all powerful. And he'll meet you anywhere that you're at. It doesn't matter where you're at right now. He will meet you uh, right at, ch at the place where you're at because he's as close as the air you breathe. Uh, my pastor himself, Elder uh, Robert Woodall in uh, Church of God in Christ in Carlisle, went to an old-fashioned prayer meeting. These women was there, and his wife drug him to that prayer meeting. He was drunk, and the old woman leading the prayer meeting, he took a cigarette out of his pocket and put a cigarette in his mouth. He was about half drunk. He said, light my cigarette, woman. <laughs> and he said that woman put her hands on him, and he said, you know that Holy Ghost wrenched down in my stomach and pulled all that alcohol out. <laughs> <laughs> and I sang a song called The Night That Jack Daniels Met John 316, and I'll tell you what, that oh, is wow. my testimony. That's my testimony there. That Christ is the only one that could ever have brought me by the drawing of the Spirit of God. God. You said, well, do you have to be in a church to be saved? No, the Spirit of God draws those that's to be saved wherever they're at. You know, it's mm -hmm. you have to get in such a sin-sick condition in your life that you're so sick and tired of living the way you did. Mm -hmm. And when you come to Christ, you'll know that you, you're saved. You, 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 people will see that change. Mm -hmm. uh, Right now on uh, YouTube, you can look up Eddie C. Loveless, the judge in Kentucky. He just died of steroid shots not too long ago. And they're suing the, the people over that. Uh, 28 people died. He was one of them. But he's a circuit court judge in Russell County, Kentucky. And uh, he, he when he got the job as judge, the other judge went out that really hated me for everything that I was worth. But Judge Eddie Loveless would come over to my dad's house and play Rook. And he would pray, and, and, and he was a Sunday school teacher in his church, and he would request prayer for me uh, because he saw something in me. And uh, and uh, I'm going to write a letter to the editor there in Russell County, Kentucky, about how, what that man meant to my life because his prayer changed my life. The prosecuting attorney, which is also a Sunday school teacher in Russell County, Kentucky, stood up and praised God when he found out that I had gotten saved. He said, right my workload is going to be so much lighter. <laughs> <laughs> because every weekend I was like Otis on Andy and Mayberry. I was in and out of the jail. They was, did everything but give me a key to the place. <laughs> and and that, is, that is so true. They would wait on me um, at 2 o'clock in the morning, Sunday morning. Tro whatever trooper in. was on duty, they'd wait on me coming from Static, Tennessee and haul me right into jail. <laughs> <laughs> And that's my, that was my way of life, but I've got a new way of life now. It's a new and living way, and we must walk there in it. So, It's interesting that your twin brother was a man of God, and you were right there raising hell, mm -hmm. raising Cain, whatever they want right. to say it. Yeah. And, and your brother would come up and pray for you, lay hands on your truck, anoint your truck with oil, and, yeah. and you'd get down to ready just crying your eyes out. The Holy Spirit was just dealing to your heart all that time. Mm -hmm. What If you could change anything at all about your life, what, what would it be? Not a thing. Not a thing? Not a thing. God orchestrated everything in my life. And I'll tell you what's interesting about my brother and I. We were both twins. I was in the Navy. He was in the Army. And uh, we went, uh, he, he went a week ahead of me. He got orders in the infantry in the <clears throat> Army to go to Vietnam, which mm -hmm. we, he would be a, a, a foot soldier. And uh, of course, I loved to drink and get and chase the women and go out, and I was going to have a party. And they were sending me to Orlando, Florida, and that's where the wave barracks is, where the women go to boot camp. Okay. And I was going to Orlando, Florida, and I said, oh, goody, goody, goody. I mean, you know, I'm going down here, and these women's going to spend 14 weeks in basic training, and they're going to get out, and they're going to be looking for three things, wine, food, and me. <laughs> <laughs> I stepped up to get my orders, and I opened my mouth, and I said, I want to volunteer for Vietnam. And once that came out, it couldn't come back. And I volunteered no, for Vietnam. We were twins in the same family, and by the, the rules back then, they couldn't send two twin brothers. They had to send the volunteer over the one that was ordered to go. So my preacher brother that was saved at 12 years old and became a preacher at 18 years old was pulled out of Vietnam and sent to Germany I was sent to Vietnam and never got a scratch in two tours of Vietnam. So God orchestrated all that and turned it around. Well, Danny, uh, my first question was, where did this all start? And you said, down in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. uh, my question to you now is, what brought you from Kentucky 
here to Pennsylvania? Well, I uh, drove a truck for a number of years, and I would go to the uh, Greencastle Truck Stop at uh, TA there. Mm -hmm. There was a little chapel there run by Sonny Dyer, and he wanted me to come up and, and, uh, and help him. I'd been called to preach, and I wasn't happy with the truck driving, and and uh, he, he, he knew I was an, an evangelist, so he asked me to come up, and he came to uh, Indiana where, I was, where my brother was pastoring, and I was there, happened to be there. And uh, he came and got me in his van and brought me back to Greencastle, Pennsylvania, lived with him for a couple of years, and worked in the truck stop ministry. And then I got hooked up with uh, uh, Larry Murphy out in uh, Blue Springs Road out in Mercersburg in the food bank. And, couple years there and, and uh, evangelized in the area for a few years and then I started studying praying for a church uh, here in, in the area to b become a pastor and uh, I was I, I had kept I was invited over to uh, uh, Stafford Avenue the, they had a church over there in a the basement for a year I never did go and then the pastor had died and uh, I, I I went over uh, on uh, invitation from someone, and and uh, of course his wife was uh, running the church and things like that, and I, I I forgot the name a bit, but I had changed the name to Jesus is the Light Community Church, and we moved it out into the public arena down in St. Thomas at uh, Wanda's Furniture Store there, and um, anyone that's uh, looking for a church or a home church that you feel that you're unworthy to go to church, and I'll tell you what, you're never, you, you'll never be more worthy than to walk into Jesus' Light Community Church and find a family there because they're waiting for you with open arms, and I am too. But I met my beautiful wife, Sharon, uh, there at that home in that church, and, uh, and we were, we've been married eight years. But uh, we just have a fun time. We're a church family. Multicultural church. Uh, uh, anyone's, everyone is welcome, no matter who they are. Uh, we 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 tend we tend to uh, shepherd the human race, uh, because uh, that's the race that God made. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And uh, we we t we tend to shepherd whosoever will. Amen. Whosoever will come in, and uh, all is welcome there. To, and we're there at St. Thomas, at seventy eight twenty Lincoln Way West in St. Thomas, Pennsylvania. And we have a uh, we've we've added a ten thousand square foot thrift store for a helps ministry and and we've helped out a lot of people over the years and and uh, and so glad to do it cheerfully amen mm -hmm. not, not grudgingly but cheerfully my wife is uh, what has kept me in this way uh, when I sometimes I might want to stray <laughs> 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 through her prayers and through her love. And the, the closeness we've we've got uh, in the last few years, we I, I'm glad that I met the godly woman that I have. I've I've had preachers tell me, you know, you're well, you're divorced and remarried. How many times have you been married? I say, well, about the same amount of time as the Samaritan woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just you know, kidding them, but you know, uh, that that's uh, that's something I can find a, a refuge. That's my city of refuge. You know, if you're going to judge me, judge me like Jesus judged her, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, everywhere in the Bible you're going to find where Jesus had an opportunity to judge them the same as the Pharisees, and his judgment was righteous judgment. Uh, when I ask you uh, if there was anything you could change about your life, what w what would it be? And you said not a thing. All these things that you've been through led up to you having this wonderful. <laughs> salvation experience right and uh and because of all those things you would you, would, you wouldn't want to tr change any of it because if something would have changed what might have been you know would you be here today maybe or maybe not right or maybe not i uh, <clears throat> there there would be a time come in my life where i'd have an opportunity to witness to someone and that opportunity would would probably have been drawn out of one of those stories that mm -hmm. happened back in my life and i if that would have been changed I would have not been able to witness uh, uh, to that soul uh, like I should. What would you say to someone who's watching right now uh, with the life you've lived? What would be your uh, words of wisdom to someone that's watching that's been through some of the stuff you've been through? Mm -hmm. uh, what, would you, what would you say to somebody that's, that's uh, just struggling in life right now? With some of the, uh, some of those Ten Commandments that you broke all those years. <laughs> uh, 
I've heard people say, you know, I'm trying to think which commandment I didn't break. You know, I've well, heard people say stuff like that. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, but, what yeah. I would, what, what I'd have to say, even into the camera to the people, I'd have to say that uh, you know, in the life that I was living, I was, I was the devil was feeding me a lie all those years. But I did find out in John 14 and 6 that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to him except the Father except by him. And uh, I found out uh, uh, by, the, by accepting Christ in my life, I found out the, the way to go. I found out the truth of the way to go. And also I found out I found a new life. And it's a great life to live. Uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I would rather have nothing than have Jesus than to have no Jesus and have everything in the world because I think in the, in the book of uh, um, Mark chapter 8 and verse 36 and 37, the Bible says, what will a man uh, exchange for his soul? I mean, what uh, what mm -hmm. was the man profit if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul? What's, what, would he get, what would he trade for his soul? And, and there's nothing we can trade out there for our soul. Jesus was offered the entire world for his soul at, at the Garden of Gethsemane when uh, the devil told him that if you'll just fall down and worship me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And Jesus refused to give his one soul for all the things of the world. There's nothing here worth that. And if you're in the in the drinking and, and, and things like that, drinking will lead to drugs. Uh, drinking and drugs lead to lying. It'll lead to stealing. It'll lead to uh, many different things. But in the book of James chapter 1, the Bible says that the lust of the flesh leads to sin, and sin will lead to death. And I was heading down the road to death, but now I'm on the road to life. And that life is through Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And I, I wouldn't take nothing for it. I wouldn't trade nothing for it. Uh, uh, there's nothing worth losing heaven for. I want to, and I want to tell you tonight to, to shun hell all you can. We are close. Uh, that day is, is close approaching. And Jesus Christ is coming back. And he's coming back not for the church over there or one over here or one over there. He's coming after his church. That's wonderful. Yeah. And the thought, uh, one thing I wanted to emphasize a little bit, uh, your brother, I think, said that if you had been the only one. Right. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking into the camera saying to you, right. my friend. Absolutely. If you had been the only one, Christ would have died for you. Yes. Well, Brother Danny, it's so good to have had you here today. Thank you. I just want to thank you for being here. Thank you for your life and your testimony. And God bless your church and your, and your ministry there and your family. I just love you, brother. Thank you. You're welcome. If you enjoyed today's show and would like to know more about Pastor Keen's ministry, you can call 717-496-5283 or visit JesusIsTheLightCommunityChurch.org. Thank you for joining us today on This Is My Story. Blessings to you. Love and blessings He'll provide all around the world. When you hear my story, give God.
sing the chorus together as we welcome the Lord in this place tonight. We welcome you, Jesus, and we sing in honor of you. Yes, then sings my Provide. 